Grace to you in peace in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So on behalf of the officers and members of this church that I welcome you to worship on the web from Doylestown Presbyterian Church. We have gathered here on the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent, nearing the end of our time of preparation for the birth of our Savior. If we listen closely enough, we can almost hear the voices of angels as they sing that good news to all the world. To help us as we conclude this time of preparation this morning, the Lau family will be leading us in the lighting of our Advent wreath, but I invite you from wherever you are on this day to join us in preparing your hearts and minds as we gather now to worship Almighty God. The God the God of all time and space is in this place. Loving God, to you we raise our hearts and voices. O radiant dawn, splendor of, e of eternal light, sun of justice, arise. Shine on those who dwell in the shadow of death. God of promise, we wait for Jesus, the morning star of justice, who brings joy with his rising. In his name we pray, amen. Oh. 
Apostle Paul tells us that it is the love of God that draws us and causes us to repent. Please join me in the prayer of confession as we say it together and then in silence. Let us pray. Your love is good news for the oppressed, O Lord, and you bind us, the brokenhearted. Forgive us, O God, when we think that your good news is only for us. Forgive us, O oh God, when we twist your gospel into something that fits comfortably into our lives. By your light, let us see you leading us beyond ourselves and into the world you love. By your grace, forgive us and free us to try again. Amen. Hear these words of Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would have life and life everlasting. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Our Old Testament <clears throat> reading today comes from Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Listen to the word of the Lord. See the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like lambs, <clears throat> like calves from the stall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We'd like to invite the children to gather around now for our time together. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm sure you enjoyed the snow of a few days ago and hope there's still enough there for you to keep being able to play with it. Today we have gathered and you can see all four candles are lit on our Advent wreath because this is the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent, which means that Christmas is just a few days away. I wanted to talk to you this morning about this last name for Jesus. It's a little bit different. And this is the ornament that I think you've been working on at home. It talks of Jesus as being a day spring. That's kind of an unusual sort of name. And I want to show you some photos that I took from my home that I think kind of gives us an understanding of what that might be all about. What you see here is some photos I took just outside of our house a few days ago. And you can see in the first one, things are still kind of dark, but then this light starts coming up. And then another one when the sun is a little bit higher. And then this third one, which the sun is now in the sky. And if you'll notice, it has these rays that go up and below. I, I don't know how the camera caught that, but I thought it was a really special kind of image for you. So for me, when we talk about Jesus as being a day spring, it's a way that we're reminded of how he brings light into this world and into our lives. Jesus himself spoke of him as being the light of the world, another name that is a way of reminding us that, that Jesus is always present with us, that he helps show us the way, and he brings us the warmth, just like we feel with the sunshine. And so my hope for you is that as you near Christmas, that you will continue to remember and give thanks to God for that gift that we found in a manger long ago, and for the ways Jesus still brings light to you and to me and all the world. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the light he brings. In his name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you soon. God bless you. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. We are hearing words that have been referred to as the Benedictus, offered by a father named Zechariah following the birth and naming of his son, John. We begin this day with the 67th verse. Then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant, David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Let us pray. We give thanks, O oh God, for your living word to us and for the gift of the spirits the same spirit that inspired your servant Zechariah long ago that now comes to us 
Help us by that gift to hear the word that you intend for this day and to be strengthened as we seek to respond with deeds that bring you glory and honor. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It happens tomorrow. Most of you know that December 21st, each year is known as the winter solstice. In the language of astronomy, that is the moment when the earth tilts away from the sun at the greatest angle that it does all year long. In practical terms, what that means is it is the time that we have the least amount of daylight. Put differently, it's known as the longest night. Tomorrow's solstice, though, brings another event that hasn't been witnessed by human beings in almost 800 years. For on Monday just after sunset, if we look at the southwestern sky, we're told that we will see the planet Saturn and Jupiter gather and appear very close to our eyes. That kind of conjunction, as it is called, happens about every 20 years as their orbits cross in that sort of way. This year, though, is known as the Great Convergence. For from our perspective, those planets will seem to be close to each other, separated only about one-fifth of the diameter of the moon, and thus could appear to be a double planet. In reality, they will still be more than 450 million miles apart, and yet to our eye, they may seem to be a single light. The last time that kind of convergence occurred was in 1623. And yet those planets were passing in front of the sun during daylight. And so it wasn't witnessed from the earth. Thus the previous time. And so the very last time human beings had the opportunity to see that kind of celestial event was on March the 4th in the year 1226. Given the timing of it happening in this month, some have others, others have begun to refer to it as the Christmas star, calling to mind the theory that perhaps was first proposed by a 17th astronomer, Johannes Kepler, who had noticed a great convergence of planets along with this solar explosion and wondered if it had been a similar kind of event that had represented the lights that brought the wise men to the manger of Bethlehem. Individuals who keep track of such things say that in 6 BC, there was a triple convergence, but that in that moment, the planets were 10 times farther apart than they will appear tomorrow night. Thus, assuming the sky is clear, we will have an opportunity to see something that previous generations never got to see themselves. In other words, it offers a kind of convergence in a different way as we near the end of this season of Advent. We've been focusing in these weeks in worship on less familiar names for Jesus as found in that seasonal hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And today we ponder the sixth verse that says, O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. As we've heard in some of the other verses in this hymn, so in this one are we reminded of the primary reason that Jesus came to earth, namely our salvation and to break the power of death. And yet in this line too, we hear him spoken of as Dayspring, a title that to my ear calls to mind 
the joyful response of a father in the first century who in that moment said, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. Those words mark the closing part of a hymn of praise that is known as the Benedictus. It's proclaimed by a first century Jewish priest named Zechariah and came immediately after the wondrous events surrounding the birth and naming of his son, one that the world would come to know as John the Baptist. It was while Zechariah was carrying out his priestly duty in the temple that nine months earlier he had been visited by an angel who told him that Elizabeth and he would finally become parents and that they were to name that child John. Zechariah doesn't believe it, perhaps because of their age. And so the angel strikes him unable to speak until the events happen. And so in verses just prior to the text before us this morning, in the moment when the infant is being named, Zechariah writes out on a tablet that in fact the child is to be named John and in that instant his tongue is freed and he begins to speak these words of praise that we have heard. He starts by celebrating the way that God is providing a savior, showing God's favor for humankind and how that one will enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness. He goes on to speak with wonder of how his own flesh and blood will be the one to prepare the way for the Lord. And then he concludes with these beautiful words. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. Those words seem to echo the promise articulated in our Old Testament reading when the prophet Malachi spoke of a future day when all hardship would come to an end. He knew that they were not yet at that moment. And yet he told of a time when the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. In Near Eastern ancient art, the image of a sun disk was apparently a frequent motif as it lifted up the promise of divine mercy and we sing about that same gift in the hymn that will close our service today when we proclaim light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Light and life, the sun of righteousness, the dawn from on high, day spring, all of those names and phrases point us again to the light that Christ brought into the world. We celebrate how that light appeared in a manger long ago and in a few days we will observe that birth again. And yet Zechariah's words made clear that even that event would not bring an end to all the hardness, harshness and darkness of creation and instead spoke of how that one would bring light in an oncoming sort of way, continuing to reveal God's love and will for all the world. We need to claim that hope of Advent again as this year draws to a close. 2020 will be remembered for all kinds of things, for a pandemic that overturned life at home and work in school in ways that we could not have imagined, and to date has taken 1.7 million lives across the world. It was in those same months 
that protests broke out in our country, calling back to the surface the reality of the challenges still faced by people of color in this land. We moved through a election cycle that reminded us once again of the great divisions that are before us as a country and of the great task that is before our president-elect. And while all that was going on, as a people of faith, we have only been able to gather inside for worship once since March. And instead, first Easter and soon Christmas Eve will both be pre-recorded services that we watch online. It has been a painful year in all kinds of ways. And yet, in the midst of that reality, there are signs of day spring. For the fact that we now have two vaccines and the inoculations have begun give us hope that in fact soon we will turn the corner. We have moved into a pattern of remote and online tools that while not exactly what we would want, have still brought about unexpected blessings that we would not have otherwise experienced. The racial unrest in our country has opened up all kinds of new conversations happening in in a variety of settings, including our church, that holds forth the hope that this time things can be different. And our elected officials in Washington are close to a compromise that will allow for needed help to come to our neighbors. And while all of that has been happening around us, there has been signs of day spring in this community of faith too. And I want to show you just a few.
The dawn from on high will break upon us, Zechariah said, showing our feet the path toward peace. We're not there yet. One doesn't have to look far to realize that there's still darkness in this world, that there's still places where peace has not yet broken out. And yet that reality does not mean that the promise articulated by a priest and a prophet before him, that that promise somehow is invalid. But what it does say even as we near the season of Advent, is that it is a time for us to wait still for it all to come together, trusting that in the providence of God, it will. It was in speaking about that great convergence tomorrow that Patrick Hardigan, who is an astronomer at Rice University, pointed out that while it is true that humans have not seen such a celestial event in nearly 800 years, that the next time it'll happen will be in March 2080. And so he suggested that it provides a unique opportunity for families. As he says that when parents gather their children outside tomorrow night to witness, it, wit witness that amazement in the sky, that they might say to them, 60 years from now, when I am long gone, I want you to come out and look in the morning star and see this conjunction too and think about me. And it was Amy Oliver, spokeswoman for the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, who said that this event of tomorrow might represent perfect timing as she said, that maybe this convergence is a unique holiday gift to the world. Maybe it's the soothing band-aid for 2020. May it be so for you and for me and all creation that it will be and represent a convergence of hope that we can join with that believer of the past and declare for ourselves by the tender mercy of God, the light from on high will break upon us. Thanks be to God that it is so. Amen. We now move to a time of uh, mixed feelings as we recognize one of our staff, a beloved member who is retiring at the end of this month after 27 years of service here. I uh, would invite Saran Mamadoff to come and to join me. We'll stand on opposite sides of the communion table. Uh, and I know that Svetlana and Rosa are here, and you're welcome to join us up front as well. It's hard to believe this day is here. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it was in October of 1997 that Soren officially began his service to our church as Sexton. Uh, to help define that for you, that means that he was the one who behind the scenes ensured that our building remained in, in clean and, and, and safe condition. Uh, he would paint, he would set up rooms for meetings so that whenever people would gather, they were ready. Uh, on Christmas Eve, he would bring out an iron and try to remove the wax from candles that was on the floor here. And, and, and I think Saran told us he's not going to miss that this year. 
Uh, but we, we wanted this moment uh, to, to celebrate with him, even though we can't do it in person, because the reality is that while his title was Sexton, Saran in many ways was the unofficial greeter of our church for generations, for children, for their families, for college students when they would come back home. It was always Saran's smiling face and laughter and teasing spirit uh, that would welcome them here. Uh, and so we wanted to let this moment, even though it's not the way we would like for it to be, namely to be uh, with the whole congregation together to celebrate it, we, we couldn't let this day pass. Uh, and so I have a few things for you, Saran, that I will uh, pass from afar. Um, first is a, a gift here from the church uh, as a whole. A couple things, gift cards in there to help you um, with the... Um, uh, the repairs and work now that you'll be doing on your own property. Uh, Saran and Svetlana bought a home a few years ago in New Britain and will be moving there in the coming months. Uh, and then an opportunity to go out uh, to eat together once conditions permit that uh, as well. Um, Saran actually in many ways also is the last person who was on the staff in this position when I arrived 17 years ago. Uh, and for those of you who know the story of how Saran and Svetlana and their sons came here, our congregation sponsored them as they were fleeing the collapse of the Soviet Union and came to be part of this church. And so for me, Saran, the fact that, that we have worked together now for 17 years suggests to me that at least part of the reason that you think now is the right time to retire is you think I've finally got it figured out, this church thing and that you can hand it off to me confident that we'll be, we'll be okay moving forward. Um, and so we've got a, a, a memento for you here as well uh, of your time here. Uh, it is a photo of our church uh, after a lessons in Carol's service, uh, which again, you worked diligently to make sure that it happened uh, and has these words here with abiding gratitude to Saran Mamadoff for his faithful service to the Dorrellstown Presbyterian Church, October 1993 to December 2020. Uh, and then also, um, since we couldn't be together today, uh, we asked the congregation to send cards to be able to uh, express their love and appreciation to you. And at last count, there are 75 of them here uh, and expect that more will be coming uh, in the days to come. Uh, so, Saran, uh, even though we cannot be together, I hope you feel the love of this community of faith for you and your family, for all the ways that you have blessed us, uh, and our prayers for you as you retire uh, and enter this new chapter of life well-deserved uh, and are able now to relax uh, and to give full-time attention to spoiling those grandchildren. Thank you, Sir Red. Let me offer a prayer. We give thanks, O oh God, for the leading of your spirit and that brought Saran and Svetlana, Vladimir and Marat to this community of faith all those years ago. For the relationship that has formed and deepened for the ways that we are a better body of faith because of his service. Pray that he will go into this new chapter surrounded by a clear understanding of our love for them and deep appreciation for all that they have done, uh, that they might recognize the difference they have made in their times in this community of faith. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There are a few announcements and prayer requests that I would like to share with you this morning. 
This morning, following this worship service at 1030, there is a, a food drive collection. If you um, have time, it goes until 1130 uh, through the driveway at, in back of Andrews Hall. You can drive through and there will be people there to help uh, unload any gifts and bags you might have for the local food drive for the Bucks County Housing Group. This food drive continues on the third Sunday of every month. Also, the DPC Mission Market, the Advent Mission Market, is still open and available. You can reach that online, and again, you can find that link on our website. This uh, week, there will be two Christmas Eve services pre-recorded, a family Christmas Eve pageant, uh, will and also a Christmas Eve candle lighting communion service will be online. Uh, they will be available on December 24th, Christmas Eve at 9 a.m. and any time after. Um, again, you can reach those links through our DPC website. During this season, there are offerings that are taken during this time to help others. Today's offering is a cherished Presbyterian tradition, the Christmas Joy Offering, which is distributed through the Board of Pensions that helps Presbytery-related schools and uh, colleges. Also, the Christmas Eve offering this year is dedicated for the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, and it is in response to the COVID pandemic uh, helping those in need around the country. As we go to prayer this morning, there are several prayers to share with you, prayer requests. We remember the family of Charles Rushton on his passing, as well as the family of Mary Lou Redstadt as she has passed away. Miriam Montgomery and Jim Lasser are in Doylestown Hospital. And we pray with Amy Adenson uh, for her mother, who has uh, moved into hospice. Let us go to prayer. Loving God, you have shown us your great love in the life, in the birth, in the presence of Jesus. We come to you as wanderers and worshipers, pilgrims and fugitives. We are seekers of light and truth, and yet we are doubters of wonder and mystery. And in the babe of Bethlehem, you reveal yourself in shocking, amazing, and mysterious ways. This time of year, we replay a pageant of a baby's birth, and often we miss the wonder and awe, the majesty and power of your submitting yourself to helplessness and need. Your coming is often trivialized with tinsel and trinkets, and so we pray that you would open our eyes to wonder to awe, that you would open our imagination to a love so great, so magnificent, that it comes in humility and helplessness. Give us the voices of angels that we might sing glory, 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 hallelujah, to the babe of Bethlehem, to the newborn king to the light of the world, to the savior of the nations, to the love that will not let us go. And so, gracious God, we pray in this time that you would speak to us anew, that you would draw us into understanding of this event in ways that we have never experienced before. Quiet our hearts, open our eyes, disturb us in our complacency 
And as we have lost traditions and as things have changed, teach us, show us anew the work that you are doing in us and through us and for your kingdom's sake. We gather as your people holding many burdens and concerns as we lift them before you. We pray for those who mourn, for the Rushton family, the Rettstadt family. We pray for those who are in need of healing and health, for Miriam and for Jim, for those who are caring for loved ones as there is disease and, and dis discomfort and illness. We pray that in these times of need, as we turn to you, we will experience your presence and your light. We give you thanks for the faithfulness of Sarin and his family. We give you thanks for the blessing he has been to us here as a community. And we rejoice in your blessing on his life. We think of the many that we have been separated from over these months. And yet we are your family of faith. We are your community to one another and to those around us. Keep us faithful in the work that you have called us to do. Keep us connected to you as the source of our light and our life. Keep us joyful in the knowledge of Christ who has come to redeem us and reconcile us to you. Emmanuel, O come, O come. For this we pray, as we say together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, give, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a time of giving. May we give with joyful hearts.
Let us pray. God most high, receive the gifts of our lives as an offering of gratitude for your grace. Overshadow us with your Holy Spirit and let it be with us according to your word for nothing is impossible with you. Amen. Go into this day and week with joy, celebrating the light that we anticipate yet again, the one who has come to us, the one who will return. And as you prepare once more for that joyful event, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and sustain you on this day and forevermore. Amen. Mm-hmm.